Our Father in heaven will want to appreciate you. Daddy will declare that you have no, none like you. You are the ancient of this. You are the unlimited God. We bless your holy name for the opportunity you've given to us to share your word once again and for healings to take place in homes and in marriages. Father, because you instituted it for people to enjoy, I pray for as many who are enduring this, Lord, grant them the, the oil of relief and help us all to be able to enjoy our marriages in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of this, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We want to look at the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to about 20. And it says, Then Saul, still breathing threat and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked letter from him to the synagogue of Damascus, so that he, if he finds if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the guards. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless. Hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when the, his eyes were opened, he saw no one, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and so unto him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called uh, the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. And in a vision has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord. I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he had done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind any who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house, and laying his hand on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once. And he arose and was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. The topic before us this hour is, is God still speaking to the church? Is God still speaking to you in that marriage of yours? <laughs> God remains the same. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8. He is always speaking to the church through the brethren, through
through the scripture. But the issue is that we are so distracted, hence couldn't hear him out. The modern believers have no ears to hear the Lord speak. Can you imagine? That even Saul, in his state of unbelief, had the voice of the Lord Jesus and was able to design the voice. He said, Who are you, Lord? God is still speaking the same way he spoke to Paul, to Saul, and he's speaking to the body of Christ. He's speaking to you and I in that marriage of yours. He's speaking to you concerning your spiritual life. He's speaking to you concerning your marital home. Marital. Why was Saul struck with blindness? Number one, he was struck with blindness to distract every distraction on his way. Uh -uh. Are you not making things clumsy? He was struck with blindness in order to distract every distraction on his way. What do you actually mean? Well, what we're saying is that Jesus gave him the big blue for him to be focused. He removed his sight so that he will be focused on the giver of sight and not what he can see. Number two, he was struck with blindness to show the supremacy of the Lord Jesus. You will agree with me, the best defense is first attack. When you attack somebody, bah, ah, you have already put up a defense. For us to fulfill purpose, brethren, we need to come out of defensive and launch out into the offensive. What do you mean by this? <laughs> we have all, as believers, we have been sitting on the defense, begging the devil. But when you want to launch out the offensive, you will be able to command the devil and he will carry his things, his luggage, and leave. By so doing, we will move to the gate of our enemies and we will possess it. Jesus launched out the offensive on Saul. He took his sight, rendered him defenseless. He thereby listened to God. When a man has no sight, he became focusless. But when the sight is there, he sees many things. Permit me to say, brethren, that there were some great men of God, though they were not born blind. But in order for them to focus on things God wanted them to do, they requested God to take their sight. Willfully and voluntarily. I can cite two examples for record purpose, but I will not mention their names. They are great men of God, and they have just departed this world. Even though they have no sight, what people who have sight could not do, they did it. They, 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 they conquered nations, and they conquered kingdoms. Their ministry spread out like white fire, yet, they have no sight. Many of us in the church today are no longer hearing from God because we are not very attentive. We have been so distracted with technology. With technology. You are praying and suddenly your phone rings. Eh, eh, look, I will call you back later. This I am praying. You are already distracted. Distractions here and there is becoming too enormous that is not allowing us to be focused. And not only in the Lord, but also in our marriage and in our homes, we no longer hear God clearly on what exactly He wants us to do. Our minds are no longer flowing with ease. 
though he knows the end from the beginning. Jesus arrested Saul because of his availability, his readiness to serve, and loyalty and dedication. He was committed to whatever he was doing. Saul, he belongs and he, he believes in Judaism. And what is Judaism? Judaism is a kind of is the re, the religion of the Jewish, the original religion of the Jewish. Where when Moses is being read and the Old Testament is being read, their minds and their heart is being veiled. Thank God that the veil is removed in Christ Jesus. So with Judaism, they saw Christianity as a strange religion. And they were doing everything to fight it out. And this man called Saul was at the forefront of it, arresting people and killing them at will. And the Lord saw that when he was a Jew and practiced Judaism, he was first class. And as he turned to the Lord, he was also an outstanding Christian. Brethren, for you to be a useful instrument in the hand of God, you need to be focused. You need to understand him. You need to develop a hearing here to hear from the Lord. We are too busy to pray. We are not ready to fast. Because fasting has become a thing of the past. We see it as things of the olden days. Our commitment to him and the kingdom is almost zero. Oh, our commitment to our home and marriage is no longer there. Where are we heading to, my dear brothers? Where are we heading to, my dear sisters? Saul later turned Paul. He distinguished himself for the Lord. And in the process of this, the Jews who he was defending and, and, and working for now planned to kill him. If you see Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 23 to 31, he gave the account. They were trying to kill him. Though he worked tirelessly for them, but at a point, when he got converted, he stopped working for them and he began to work against them. So they decided to also work against him and sleep life out of him. Brethren, what does it mean to somebody? Means that there is a super God in heaven and Jesus is he. What became of Ananias? He is a prophet, a trusted prophet of God that had God expressly but he almost missed out his purpose because he was judgmental about Saul. Brethren, permit me to say at this junction that every man, every woman has a story behind him. Whatever story you have not heard about your spouse before you went to the altar and you agree that I do is no longer valid. Ananiah said, I've heard so much about this man. He was a killer. Yes. The Lord Jesus said, though he was a killer, but I've turned him to a healer. Yes. He was persecuting the church. Yes. I've turned him to be a preacher of the church. He will no longer persecute, but he will preach the gospel. For the fact that your wife, your spouse, your husband has been this, has been that. Don't allow anyone to poison your mind by coming back to you after you have declared I do only to come and tell you it used to be this, it used to be that. Let those people know that every story, every building has a story behind it. And that is why you will hear, they will say one is a bungalow. One is a one-story building. Uh, somebody might say the spelling is different, but the pronunciation is the same. One story building, two story building. That means he has two stories <laughs> behind it. 
So let's see it that way. So what it means in effect is, when a marriage ceremony takes, is taking place, the wedding, there is a column there where they normally ask, do anyone has any reason whatsoever why this couple should not be joined together? And they will also ask from the couple, do you have any reason or do you think of anything that can debar you people from being joined together? And if the answer is no, the, 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 the minister will go ahead to bind them together in love. And immediately after that day, they will declare that whatever that has not been said here concerning this couple can no longer be entertained anymore. So in the same vein, brethren, I want to say that Jesus proved this to Ananias and he told him, Ananias, listen and listen very well. I cannot make mistake. I chose this man for a purpose. Because of his commitment, his dedication to Judaism, I know when it comes to Christianity, he will do more than that. So brethren, for the fact that your wife used to be, for the fact that your husband used to be, doesn't mean he will continue to be. That is the message. Thank God that Ananias has a listening ears and a willing heart. A willing heart. He moved and he fulfilled purpose in life. His own, his own assignment was just to reconcile Saul, who later became Paul, to God. Jesus could have done it without Ananias, but he wanted to glorify himself through Ananias the prophet. If he has not done that, his name would not have been found in the book of life. But because he did that, his name was written in the book of life. Excuse me. Immediately after he did this, nothing again was heard about Ananias. He fulfilled purpose. He raised the great evangelist of our time. And from there, no evangelist has ever come up. No apostle has ever been raised that is greater than Saul. Paul. Hallelujah. What is it that Jesus is asking you to do? What is it specifically that he has asked you to do? He asked Ananias, go and heal him. Go and perfect that which God has proposed towards Saul. And immediately he did. Saul regained his sight and he changed his name from Saul to Paul. That was his assignment. His name was written in the book of life because of that single act of healing. Saul and helped him to become Paul. He and Ananias had specific instruction and he carried out promptly, not reluctantly. It is a pity that many of us in the body of Christ today, why we are not hearing from God again, it's not because God is not speaking. God is ever speaking. He's speaking to us on how we can rearrange our home, on how we can, you know, scale through in our marriages. But we don't listen to him because we believe that it is a cake. Except you and I begin to hear God out, we may not be able to do exploit for him. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. He said, those who know their God, they will do great exploit for this to happen we need to return to our first love who is your first love i want to say that jesus is your first love to him who have an ear hears let him hear right now what the spirit of god is saying to the church what is the word of the lord concerning your marriage what is the word of the Lord concerning that home of yours? Jesus is sending a word to you. Are you challenged in that marriage? He's saying to you that if only you can look up all to me, I will see you through. Remember, in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, the word of the Lord assured us there, he said, I didn't say you will not pass through the waters. But the only thing he said is that when you pass through the waters, he said, I will be with you. 
He didn't say you will not pass through the fire. But he said when you pass through the fire, he said I will be with you. And that I will not allow the water to overflow you. I will not allow the fire to burn you. God has a way that he could have protected Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from going into the fire. But he didn't. He waited for them to go into the fire and he protected them in the fire. Do you know how many souls were lost along the line? The soldiers of Nebuchadnezzar that took the three men into the fire were born into ashes. Look at Daniel's case into the den of lion. The Lord could have protected him without sending him into the, into, into the, the den of the lion. But he went in there for a purpose. Daniel, first of all, said, I will not allow myself, you know, to be defiled with the wine. Daniel saw the redness of the wine and the way the something was moving. He closed his eyes to the redness of the wine. He closed his eyes to the intoxication, intoxication of the wine. And when the lion also saw him, because Daniel closed his eye to the redness of the wine, the lion also closed his eye to the redness of the blood of uh, 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 um, Daniel. And he said, no, this blood I cannot touch because he was obedient to God. Brethren, at the same time with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the Lord God did it so that the king would be converted. And it was when the king saw it, he gave his life. And he said, there is no any other God anywhere other than the God of Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego. So I've come to tell somebody here today that God is still speaking to the church. God is still speaking to every individual in the church. But the issue is, we lost our hearing, uh, I mean, ability to hear from God. I cannot do this effectively by listening to God. Number one. You need to return to the drawing board. What do you mean? Let's look at the book of Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 downward. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14. For, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through the spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we have, we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Except you return to the drawing board when you can hear from him. Number two, repair and reconstruct the altar of the Lord that has broken down. Elijah, we hear that Elijah pray and fire comes down and um, came down. Hmm. It was not as ordinary as that because he made a sacrifice. Elijah did pray, but before he prayed, he did something. He sacrificed. After all, the prophets of Baal, they were numbered. They were 250 plus another 200 making 450. But the something is, how, what were they able to do? 450 plus 400. What were they able to do? Nothing absolute. They were not able to do anything because they did not commune with God. So, after they have tried and they failed, what became of them? They failed. And when it was the turn of Elijah to pray, the Bible says that Elijah first of all repaired and reconstructed the altar of the Lord that has broken down to enable him to commune 
with God in heaven. First Corinthians, first Kings chapter 18, verse 30. Elijah did before fire came down. Let new oil of prayer flow through you to your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, fasting must be embraced again. It has become a thing of the past in our lives. Matthew chapter 17 verse 20, except this mountain will not move, except by fasting and prayer. And you need to pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17. Number four, be united to the Lord. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together? Except they agree. Lovers talk freely, not enemies. You need to be in love with God. You need to be in love with your family. You need to maintain the integrity of God in your family. And of course, the Lord will be able to speak. He doesn't want to waste his, his word or his effort. By so doing, he's not talking to just anybody, but he talks to his loved ones. God is always speaking to the church, to his church. God is always speaking to individuals in the church. God is always speaking to people in their homes. It is left for you and I to tap into the hearing, into hearing him out, so that we flow along with him, with his spirit. God is speaking to you in that your relationship. The issue is... Are you listening or are you hearing him out? He's telling you that even in spite of what you are going through, I can see you through. If only you will allow me. If you had him, how are you responding to him? Many of us, we no longer hear him. And some of us, when we hear him, we begin to bind and cast that this can be God. How would you have asked me to do this terrible thing? With all this, 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 what this woman is doing to me? With all this, this man has been doing to me. But he is the one speaking to you. It's not the devil. Why, how on earth do you think you will be able to bind the God, your creator? It is not done. A man was so curious after listening to a message sometimes. And the message is, does God still speak to the church? And he queried, he, he said, God, if truly you are still speaking to the church, I want you to speak to me. <laughs> and he was so surprised because the Lord spoke to him instantly and said, as you are going home, branch at that supermarket and buy a jug of milk. That's in America. Buy a jug of milk of five liters. But he looked at it. What do I need milk for? I have it at home. We are okay. So why do I need milk? And the word of the Lord just said to him, buy it. So he said, if it is the Lord that is speaking, assure me. So he did. He bought the milk. And as he was going home with the milk in his hand, the Lord spoke to him again. He said, press the bell of that place, that apartment. So, he now said, but what for? So, when he pressed, he went there reluctantly, and he pressed the bell. Immediately, he pressed the bell. Behold, an elderly man came out of the house, and he said to him, are you the angel that the Lord has sent to us? Where is the milk? And the man was like, where is the milk? Who told you I'm bringing milk? He was so curious. And the man said to him, for the past three days we have been believing God for a jug of milk. Because our grandchild has nothing to eat. And the man felt like, wow, you mean God is still speaking? It is only that we cannot hear him. And he queried it. Now asked them, what happened? They told him, no work, no money. He brought out his purse and emptied the purse. He went back home and he came the another day to give them more money because 
he was convinced beyond ordinary doubt, every reasonable doubt, that God is still speaking. Hmm. If he has not obeyed God to press that bell and do what God asked him to do, you see, God has substitutes for everyone. God would have sent someone else to go and do what he is able to do. Remember Jesus said, if you and I fail to worship him and praise him, he said he will raise stone. But I want to say that you are too much to be replaced with ordinary stone. In fact, you are too much to be replaced with another human being, not to talk of stone. I will not be replaced. You will not be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. In the same vein, I want to tell us that God is speaking to us. And he's speaking to you in that your relationship and in that your marriage. Keep up listening. Listen to him very attentively. And you will be blessed appropriately in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't do what the scripture commanded us not to do. And make sure that you give God the rightful position in your life. May he bless his word in our individual lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to reaffirm to somebody that God is forever speaking to the church. God is forever speaking to the brethren. The issue is, are you still able to hear him? Am I able to hear him? But the word coming your way this hour is for you to allow your ears to be attentive to what Jesus has to say. Stay blessed. Enjoy your marriage and the fullness thereof. Don't quit, but remain. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.